Hello and welcome everybody to my latest episode of the technical let's play. As I've said in my last episode, this is uh, again going to be more of a spotlight of a tour if you want it. Um, and I'm going to show you what I did since my last tour. And of course I want to speak about a very important thing that I learned during uh, my playthrough of uh, this episode and something I wish to tell you guys so you can be even more efficient than I am uh, right now not, not that I'm being very efficient at it I'm just <laughs> I just learned a lot from my mistakes and I want to share my experience with you guys so first of all let's go a little bit outside and see what we have made so far as you can see we I have put uh, some roofing on top of my uh, 9x9 rooms uh, if you're interested these are 9x9 and we, without the walls and so that makes them 11x11 uh, uh, 11 11 buildings uh, yeah, what I wanted to, um, to speak about is planning ahead and what it actually means to stay true to a predetermined layout. Now, uh, when I started this, I went in my head and said, okay, I am going to do this uh, in these rooms, 9x9, nine nine, and I'm going to stay in this layout, and that's it. Uh, even from the beginning I started having problems because of my poor planning uh, I don't know if you saw my last episode but for example this room uh, I uh, later discovered that it would have been better to ro rotate everything in this room by 90 degrees <laughs> because this is uh, my um, liquid processing room and this here is my liquid storage area so the oil that is over here and this of course is going to be for uh, biofuel yeah, from forestry this oil would have been nice to go through the floor into that room over there and not through a teleport pipe as it is now as you can see there's a teleport pipe in here and another one under here yeah um, so planning ahead and predetermining a specific pattern for your buildings isn't necessarily it is a actually quite a beautiful thing i mean it's um, analytical it's mathematical it's order <laughs> if you want to call it like that but it is pretty pretty difficult to keep everything in this layout um what i've built since uh my last episode let's just get down here i have built of course uh these lasers and the assembly table now i have uh, made this uh, redstone golden chipset because uh i've basically built all in the my entire logistics pipe uh, system with those golden chipsets instead of the usual golden gears so all of these logistics over here are built with um, golden chipsets because uh, as you know that's from the oh come on let's fly all right that's from the latest um, logistical pipe uh, update uh, this room basically remained the same my startup room all right and this is where I've done uh, most of my work so far and this is the perfect example of what I've been saying about uh, predetermining your location and just making sure you do a very thorough plan before you start planning everything before you start building everything um, let me just stop that ticking because it's annoying as hell I'll go down here for a little bit 
I'm even though my computer does not allow it. Uh, oh, <laughs> of course, stupid me. I have the stub lever upstairs. Lever lever. Yeah, I know. Here it is. And now the ticking is stopped. <laughs> um. So I'm. What the hell is in the? Oh, I have another one. Darn it! Forgot about that one. I want to talk uh, in this room. I want to talk to you guys about um, when I'm in creative. No. Okay, let's do this and F1 and get this guy out of here for now. Okay, my friend, there you go. And creative again and F1. Uh, now, by presenting this entire. Um, room and uh, basement I want to keep in mind uh, one single concept because uh, I'm going to repeat it over and over and and I want you to remember that concept uh, I don't have a, a special name for it it's uh, basically item flow through the pipes so item flow or if you wish it um, item highway okay so that's uh, a thing that I learned you need to take into account before anything else before you even start playing you need to tell to yourself okay how do I want my items to go through my system okay I want it to go left to right okay so I'm going to start building left to right and I'll start from there and put some adjacent rooms to that system and so on and so forth. Now that is going to be of course very very hard when you have uh, a layout like this one. You want to stay within this layout. But again, it, it's very very important. So again, item flow or item highway, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's see what i have done here so i can tell you my item flow and why it's not working for me very well uh, as you have seen here i have a quarry okay this quarry is powered by these three engines over here uh, the engines uh, get fuel from the fuel room through this teleport pipe again a poor decision on my part because that teleport pipe again four diamonds uh, actually eight diamonds to get a teleport pipe the water is supplied through my uh, system with uh, redstone engines that I'm actually very proud of <laughs> it's the simplest you can get with the uh, least amount of, uh, of products you basically have four engines for the redstone engines and you power that with one lever, lever and two redstone dust that's it very simple and efficient come on let's get out of here please whoa almost died in creative yeah i know so i get my items from the quarry they are teleported in here in this teleport pipe okay this is my very simple uh, st uh, not storage sorting system everything is done with logistics pipes so I have my default, okay, which apparently old in or isn't, yeah. Uh, I have my dust chest, which uh, basically everything that gets macerated gets in here, okay. My miscellaneous uh, dirt and cobblestone and so on and so forth. My precious... Um, what you call it? <laughs> Ores, if you want to call it like that. Everything made out of dust, nickelite, redstone, and glowstone. This one is actually empty because I don't have a use for that right now. This is for all the ores, everything metal. Okay. Uh, and this is my basically my dumping area, my re uh, equivalent exchange antimatter relay. Okay. So this is every uh, bit of my sorting system. 
This uh, goes underneath into a macerator, I'll talk about that later and from that macerator everything comes in here uh, and gets extracted with this um, chassis pipe from um, uh, Logic 6 pipes and it has in it um, an extractor module. So that's pretty basic. Um, okay so the flow gets in here and this is the sorting system now if i want every anything from this sorting system i have my provider pipes beneath that as you can see and also the sorting system is linked with the provider pipes uh, through that and this is my crafting area okay and i also because it's getting a little bit big i've started uh, with uh, two additional uh, crafting automatic crafting tables in here uh, for now this is if we didn't have um, this area over here this will be would be very nice and uh, simple right but this is where everything gets complicated this is my surprise that I was talking about in the last uh, episode my system that basically uh, melts down that uses the um, the advanced furnace okay um, this should not have been here this should have been here in the middle of this room why is that <laughs> because this is the crafting area this area i do not uh, work very much in this area okay and I want the items to go from uh, the depositing chests into the crafting area directly and from there into back into my depositing chests okay so this should not have been here because I put this here let's go underneath okay this is my smelting um, apparatus let's say like that and that's my macerator contraption okay this over here and this of course is the timer that power uh, that gets uh, power to everything now because I've built this here and I was not thinking I had to build my water mill operation over here which is a lot of space as you can see and because I want, I didn't want to use at the at the beginning solar panel panels from Red Power to power my um, retrievers. I have built a thermopile contraption over here, which again a lot of space. So now, if I want to move all this melting and macerating, <laughs> uh, watch my call it over here, it's going to be hell and i don't like hell by the way i really really like how my basement turned out i like to build all my basements from uh, sandstone because being underground it gives it uh, a lot more light so you feel it uh, it feels a lot bigger than it actually is um, which cobblestone does not create that impression at all <laughs> yeah I know uh, those are two red power batteries by the way built into the wall so that's um, that's the main thing I wanted to talk today about item flow be very very careful what you do and when you do it okay what have I, have I done different uh, first of all I wouldn't have sticked to this uh, layout even though it is quite beautiful to my eye <laughs> uh, and I've tried every single roof to build in a different way as you can see so the, this here is a small cross that's actually my first roof so that's just simple <laughs> this is a small cross this here is something different a little bit different but still kind of the same maybe some concentrical stuff a T and again I was playing around with creativity yeah I know um, 
what have I done? Have what would have I done differently? I wouldn't have stayed with this system. I would have been more careful with my uh, flow. For example, uh, this all this oil came from here, from a small uh, oil geyser over here. So I would have started here near the geyser, built my uh, processing room here, then my stor oil storage area, my fuel storage area, then my uh, build craft uh, constructing area, which you would have had the lasers. Okay. Uh, from that, there would be a, a point uh, for incoming objects from uh, any quarry that I had. So from that point, I would have uh, constructed a small um, sorting area. And from that sorting area, I would have uh, started my crafting area. And on the sides of that crafting area, of course, I would have, have uh, had a small room for every single um, contraption that I uh, needed, as in macerator or smelting. Um, I would want to talk about this, con uh, this here apparatus because uh, as I've said, this was my surprise for you guys. Uh, I'm already 16 minutes in, so maybe you would hang with me another four minutes, <laughs> three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, what this does, this is actually quite um, an uh, inefficient way to do it, but uh, it's very complicated and it's very fun to do. When I tested the, this, let me just go F1 over here. When I tested this uh, guy in my test world, I couldn't make crafting pipes go into a chest and from that chest extract everything. And put, for, for example, for example, let's say I have an iron ore. Okay, let's get an iron ore from here. Oh, I already have some. Uh, let's put that back. Thank you. Let's say I have an, uh, an iron ore. Okay. So I tell, I tell my crafting system uh, from this iron ore, I want you to put you to put it in some chest. And from that chest, you will have uh, two iron dust. Okay. And I would have another crafting pipe. To the same chest that says from one iron dust you get one iron ingot if you put it in the, this chest and that uh, at that time logistics pipes didn't want to, to work that uh, with me uh, I've seen of course in the Dire Worlds uh, maybe 39 or 40 episodes that uh, for him it actually worked um, but for me it didn't work at the time so maybe there was a, a small update in um, the last update for logistics pipes i didn't try it with that one uh, that one may might uh, might work so what i had to do i had to use the buffer from red power uh, which is actually quite simple to to make okay so you have some iron bars and some wooden blanks so i had to make a buffer and just consider that as um, as a chest so I basically you I have four crafting pipes around that buffer and each crafting pipe has a different recipe okay so you put in copper dust and you get uh, copper from this buffer tin of course bronze dust and what is this one sand into glass okay uh, I think these guys are here because I might have uh, I might have uh, exited the game with them in there. Yeah, maybe that's uh, what happened. So okay, so I put everything in here. So everything in these buffers gets extracted and goes down into that furnace uh, with this uh, retriever. Now, the thing with the retriever 
is that because of uh, initially I had it uh, this ticker that powers the this timer that powers the the retriever I had it on two seconds and I discovered that when uh, the system uh, puts out uh, the items this uh, retriever gets them before uh, the the crafting pipe manages to get them out of the system okay so I I put all of this stuff here because I only want I wanted this stuff the the raw materials get out of the system uh, and not the the product okay so the iron the induction iron furnace that does its job and these two retrievers of course retrieve only what they need to retrieve and uh, get into the respective uh, buffers um, as I've said, this uh, this system isn't very very um, efficient because because I only put one of each in uh, in these slots. It only takes one at a time. So if you want something fast, you can't get it. Okay. Uh, an alternative to the system would be, of course, an uh, equivalent exchange uh, dark matter furnace and it would basically work the same you can put around it uh, uh, as much uh, crafting pipes as you want but if you do not have that uh, you're pretty much fucked pardon my french uh, yeah that's about it that's uh, all i wanted to show you guys i also started a little bit uh, with the railcraft furnaces here because I'm going to do a lot with those so without further ado oh come on I'm not in creative I forgot yeah <laughs> please rate comment and subscribe and as always don't forget to be awesome guys ciao